The second night of the Democratic debates just ended. And of the two nights, this was the debate everybody was waiting for. You know, if last night was a small lower back tattoo, tonight was Mike Tyson's face. <laughs> because coming into tonight, we all knew it was about beef. The stage is set for a second heated showdown. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris facing off just hours from now. High stakes rematch. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris facing off again tonight after her blistering attack in the first debate. Biden vowing he won't be so polite this time. Joe Biden telling donors it's no more Mr. Nice Guy. I was probably overly polite in uh, the way I didn't respond. Yes, according to Biden, the last time he didn't do well was because he was overly polite which is a convenient excuse for getting your ass handed to you. I, uh, <laughs> I used that same excuse whenever I lost a fight in high school. The only reason he was able to shove me in that locker is because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> so in the build-up to tonight's debate, the main story was Kamala Harris versus Joe Biden. But because Cory Booker has also been going after Biden for the past couple of weeks, tonight's debate was set up for fireworks, especially once we found out where everyone would be standing on that stage. Biden will find himself flanked by Booker and Harris. Biden standing in between two candidates who have targeted him most. Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and racial inequality could be a very big discussion. Joe Biden is in an uncomfortable sandwich on that stage. He's got on either side of him Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. Yeah, Joe Biden, this was an unlucky draw, man. Cory Booker on the one side, Kamala on the other side, and he's in the middle. It's like the world's most racially charged Oreo. <laughs> I feel like Joe Biden got on the stage and just instinctively tried to lock his car doors. He was like, ah, ah, no attacks. And if you tuned into the debate hoping to see conflict, it didn't take long for you to get your wish. Vice President Biden's campaign calls your plan, quote, a have-it-every-which-way approach. Well, they're probably confused because they've not read it. There will be a public plan under my plan for Medicare and a private plan under my plan for Medicare. If you notice, there's no talk about the fact that the plan in 10 years will cost $3 trillion. You will lose your employer-based insurance. You can't beat President Trump with double talk on this plan. You're just simply inaccurate in what you're describing. Your plan, by contrast, leaves out almost 10 million Americans. So I think that you should really think about what you're saying, but be reflective and understand that the people of America want access to health care. That's right, two minutes into the debate, and Kamala was already removing her earrings, and Biden was removing his hair plugs. Oh, it's on. It's on. Now, this time, this time, Biden and Kamala were arguing back and forth about who had a stronger health care plan. And compared, compared to the previous skirmish, they were a lot more civil, as you saw. You know, this was like a couple fighting after the cops had told them to calm down, you know? <laughs> just like, no, nah, I'm trying to keep my cool here, but your, your health care plan ain't shit, just like your mama. <laughs> but other than that, other than that, the health care debate was pretty civil tonight. Again, the Democrats largely agreed on the big picture of getting universal health care. What they disagreed on is how to get there. Biden proposed polishing Obamacare and disrupting the system as little as possible. Kamala wanted a Medicare plan that also incorporated something that would include private insurance. And Bill de Blasio, he just wanted to knock the whole thing down, you know, just like he did to Tokyo. So, <laughs> to figure out who had the best plan, the Democrats got down to the numbers. And I mean a lot of numbers. Let's talk about math. Let's talk about the fact that the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies last year alone profited $72 billion. My plan cost $750 billion. That's what it cost, not $30 trillion. Thank you, Mr. Vice. That is 70% of what the government will collect in taxes over the next 10 years. 20% of our economy, one out of every $5 spent on health care. I don't know what math you do in New York. I don't know what math you do in California. But I tell you, that's a lot of money. Hey, I'll tell you what kind of math we got in New York. Number one and number two, asshole. <laughs> that's the kind of math we got here. Hey! <laughs> I'm, can I be honest with you guys? This, this is the part of the debate where I think Democrats really need to get a whole lot better. No one at home can keep up with all of these numbers. 40 billion, 7%, 70% over 10 years, 30 trillion, 3 trillion when you compound the... No, it's too complicated, right? It almost made me miss Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> because when he does math, he just comes off stage like, folks, we're gonna do numbers. 
Best numbers, bigger numbers. And everyone at home is like, yeah, numbers. I guess it's numbers. <laughs> you gotta find a middle ground. So that was healthcare. Then came immigration. And just like last night, the major question facing Democrats was, how would they deal with the crisis at the border? Most of them agreeing again that they would try and find a more humane way to treat asylum seekers and illegal immigrants. But when they brought up President Obama's record of mass deportations, Joe Biden probably wished that he could have been deported out of this debate. Vice President Biden, I didn't hear your response when the issue came up of all those deportations. You were Vice President of the United States. I didn't hear whether you tried to stop them or not using your power, your influence in the White House. The president, president came along and he's the guy that came up with the idea, first time ever, of dealing with the dreamers. He put, put that in the law. I don't hear an answer from the vice president. I'm <laughs> confused. Mr. Vice President, you want to be president of the United States. You need to be able to answer the tough questions. I guarantee you, if you're debating Donald Trump, he's not going to let you off the hook. I was vice president. I am not the president. I keep my recommendation in private. Unlike you, I expect you would go ahead and say whatever was said privately with him. That's not what I do. Oh, hold up. Did Joe Biden just call Bill de Blasio a little ass snitch? <laughs> That's, that's what he said, right? Yeah. I didn't realize Biden was so true to the streets. He's like, uh, Mr. Mayor, unlike you, I protect my neck because these bitches ain't loyal. That's what I do. <laughs> so, this is where the debate got interesting, right? Bill de Blasio sucker punches Biden out of nowhere, asking him why he let Obama deport so many people. And just when Biden is trying to battle the giants of New York, Cory Booker jumps in with the shiv. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, you can't have it both ways. You invoke uh, President Obama more than anybody in this campaign. You can't do it when it's convenient right. and then dodge it when it's not. Yeah, Cory Pooka makes a good point. Joe Biden's really good at using Obama when it'll help his resume, but then when it comes to something that Obama wasn't really great at, all of a sudden Biden's like, Obama, Obama. <laughs> Is that the Irish guy, Patty Obama? Is that who? I think I've been to that pub. And that Obama line was just the beginning, right? Because after that, Corey went on full-on attack mode. Senator Booker called your new criminal justice reform plan, quote, an inadequate solution to what is a raging crisis in our country, unquote. Why is Senator Booker wrong? Well, I don't... I think he is wrong. I think we should work together. He has a similar plan. I think that we should change the way we look at prisons. We have a system right now that's broken. And if you want to compare records, and frankly, I'm shocked that you do, uh, I am happy to do that. There's a saying in my community, you're dipping into the Kool-Aid and you don't even know the flavor. Uh, you need to... <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! You know what's cool about being black? Is you can just make up phrases and white people don't know if it's real. <laughs> Because we were watching the debate, and every white person in the room just looked at me like, is that a thing? Is that... <laughs> Black people, we can just say whatever. Just be like, man, you better watch yourself, because right now, you deep frying a chicken, but ain't got no skin. <laughs> this is where Corey was in his element. He had Biden on the ropes. And he was always going to have him on the ropes, because Vice President Biden has been in politics for 50 years. He is bound to have more baggage than anyone else. It's not a fight that he could win. And then just when you thought, that Biden was the target of the night, Tulsi Gabbard pops up from under the ring and slams Kamala with the chair. Well, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row, and she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Yeah, that was a rough moment for Kamala. Because while she was trying to come after Biden for his history on criminal justice, Tulsi Gabbard came after her for hers, which isn't exactly the best record. And you could see Kamala wasn't happy in this moment. You know, she was about to be like, Tulsi, let me tell you a story about a little girl who got her ass beat. <laughs> and that little girl was you. <laughs> So now, you've got de Blasio coming after Biden, Booker jumping in the middle, Gabbard hitting Kamala. It was almost like Quentin Tarantino wrote this part of the debate. <laughs> everyone killing everyone. And then just like yesterday, while all the bigger candidates were fighting, the smaller candidates used the little time they had to try and break through with policy and ideas. And tonight's Marion Williamson 
was Colorado Senator Michael Bennett. This is the fourth debate that we have had and the second time that we have been debating what people did 50 years ago with busing when our schools are as segregated today as they were 50 years ago. I believe you can draw a straight line from slavery through Jim Crow, through the banking and the redlining to the mass incarceration that we were talking about on this stage a few minutes ago. But you know what other line I can draw? 88% of the people in our prisons dropped out of high school. Let's fix our school system and maybe we can Senator. fix the prison pipeline that we have. Okay. <laughs> Say what you want about him, but Mr. Mackey is right. <laughs> Instead of spending half of the debate talking about laws written 50 years ago, it would have been nice to hear more about how the Democratic candidates plan to fix America's problems today. And I'll be honest with you, it was really weird that the Democrats allowed themselves to get sidetracked by side beefs when they all also acknowledge that they have one common goal, defeating public enemy number one. But this pitting against progressives, against moderates, saying one is unrealistic and the other doesn't care enough, that to me is dividing our party and demoralizing us in face of the real enemy here. I would take any Democrat on this stage over the current president of the United States. We cannot tear each other down. We have to focus on beating Donald Trump. Don't let the Republicans divide this party against itself. We're going to make America better than it's ever been in the years to come. Let's do that together. Hey, you see, it's weird. Everyone says that. They all said they want to beat Donald Trump. But here's the honest truth. If the Democrats spend every single debate destroying each other, by the time you get to a one-on-one -on -one with Donald Trump, you'll already have done his work for him. Yeah. Because you'll get to the debates all discredited, and he won't have to do anything. He'll just come out and be like, guys, so many numbers, so many numbers. <laughs> we'll be right back.